Okay, this is an example of candlestick math. Now, this animation doesn't belong to me. I got this off the... Uh, uh, I recorded it off of uh, a course I was taking. and I, But I think it's a, an apt description. The, the uh, animation is much better than I can do. Anyway, um, the concept is the same. You see these two bars side by side. It's just showing you where the wicks are, where the bodies of the bars on these two separate bars are. In the first case, we have a bare bar. Second case, we have a slightly bullish bar. But when you add these two bars together, you can see that this bullish bar and this bear and this this bearish bar and this bullish bar winds up with a slightly bearish bar with a little bit of uh, body and these this much longer wick. Now, the reason that you add these two bars together is that you see this bar looks completely different, this single bar, from the two previous bars. So you took them individually. The idea is to try to ga gain perspective on a series of bars and to see whether or not markets are in balance or markets are trending. And if markets, if you take a, a bunch of bars and put them together, you, after practicing, you can see that these two bars, the bearish and the bullish bar together, winds up with a bar that is relatively neutral, maybe only slightly bearish. Okay, despite the fact that the previous bar was more of a bullish bar. So when you look at a series of bars side by side, you can make a better judgment, in my opinion, as far as determining whether or not these series of this bar or the series of bars are going to lend toward a, a, give you some perspective on the context of the marketplace. Now, let me show you how it works uh, when you have a, another series of bars and, and add them up. The idea that I've got here is that this, let's say that you have a stop below here. This is your hard stop, and you've, this is where your target is, which is the green line. And it's flagged as a valid entry. Now, once you get the entry, your bar goes up. You have a, a slightly uh, bullish bar, and things look pretty good. Uh, on the next bar, it's, it's bearish, so you're really back at your entry price. Uh, after a little while longer, you get another slightly bearish bar, or a bullish bar, I mean. Um, another bearish bar, this is a stronger bearish bar, and then subsequently a, a tiny little bar, which is a, another another slightly bearish bar with a small body. Lo looks like price is coming back a little bit. You're kind of getting moving back and forth. Another slightly bearish bar, another slightly bearish bar with a bit of a gap. And then you... And that's it. It's okay. Well, I'm going to bail out. This is just too much, too much of a hassle. It's not going anywhere. I can get bail out. And then the next bar comes up, and it's a bearish bar. You get, pardon me. You get out here, and then the next bar goes to target. So the point is, is that you waited through most of it, and then just before it had the chance to get to target, despite the fact that your target and your stop was in pretty good shape, you bailed out prior to the, the last bar going to target. You can see you waited through all of that other noise, uh, waited through it, and then got out at the inopportune time. Got it at the time just before it went to target. Despite the fact that your calculations, your uh, setup for the original trade was valid. So it wind up and it hit the target without you. So you got a break even trade or maybe even a slight loss because of the fact that uh, you got you you weren't confident in how you set this up in the first place. Using the same, you have to see the original entry. At, this is the original entry at close. You do some candlestick math from the candle after entry to uh, to candle of candle after entry to candle when the trade was exited. So you add all this together. You add all the bars to when the trade was exited, and you'll see that this is a bar that is just uh, really neutral. It. You, end, you exit it based on a, uh, this is the high, you take the low, you take the lowest part of the body, you take the highest part of the body, and you wind up with a doji. So things really didn't go anywhere. And all those bars, despite the fact that it would whipsawed back and forth, prices didn't move. And if you were to exit on the second to last bar, you had exited on, in a situation where prices were just stuck. So if you move that back... If you add all those bars together, you end up with just a, uh, a a neutral bar, basically neutral bar. You would probably be more inclined to stay with that trade, particularly if you did the research on the rest of it and everything was fine. So that's uh, really the summation of of why candlestick math can be helpful, because if you move that, if you keep that in mind and you have that 
really nondescript candle. Uh, to add them all together, you can see that those 10 bars that were added together just equaled one bar, which was relatively neutral. All right, let me show you in a real-world example from yesterday. Uh, in this case, I've got this box marked off, this this gold box, and it's marked off with, uh, it encompasses the 16 bars. And in these 16 bars, from top to bottom, the Y value is 18 ticks from top to bottom. And as you can see, price is a couple of bear bars, a couple of, of uh, bull bars, slightly moved down, moves back up, moves down. Now, I got it right up to this end bar, and if we add all these bars together, using candlestick math from the previous uh, previous example I showed you, then you'd wind up with a bar that looks like this. Price has moved up, it's moved down, but when it's closed, it's closed right on this, this level right here. The next two bars in this line, if we added these next two bars over, you could see that it closes on its high, it closes right on the high, over and above this, so this bar, it would look like this, a long taper with this. Now, if you're looking at these first 16 bars, and you look at this particular, uh, this particular bar and trying to determine whether to go long or short, this is, well, so it's, it's in green, but this bar here is just a doji. So you can see that the buyers and sellers are just in balance here. This bar, on the other hand, if you take this one by itself, you can see that prices had gone all the way down to this area, came all the way back up and closed on its high. So this is a, more of a bullish bar. And as you can see, that if you were to wait on this, this is, of course, they're both 18 ticks long. However, which bar would you be more inclined to go long with? Likewise, the reverse is true when it's short. So using candlestick math can help helps me get a, a little bit more clarity to the market, particularly when you're seeing prices go up on a, on a run. And in this case, uh, at this, uh, this juncture, if you look at it from the perspective of, off of this bottom, price has moved up to this area. Now, our price is going to continue up. And when you look at these bars in sequence, after a 21-minute period of time or 22 minutes, you can see that at the very end of this line, price has just moved up higher. And would it go to now? This isn't just the only way you would determine whether to go long on this particular bar. But if our target is up here in this area and you get a bar closing like this, it may give you more impetus to getting into that particular trade. At least that's the way I look at it. So that's how candlestick math can help you to uh, give you some context to the market. And the nice thing about using candlestick math is that once you've practiced this uh, for a while, it, you can start to see these, uh, these types of candles on the chart in real time. And that's the point. When, we can see, when you can see these kinds of things on re in real time, it'll be more inclined to, um, you'll be more inclined to take the trade in the direction of where things are heading, even if you wind up with a, a reasonably tight trading range in, in uh, what appears to be a, a pretty strong move up. Okay. That's it for now. This is Vance. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.